You are welcome to this tutorial in which we are going to look at task 4 of the Cambridge A-Level IT Paper 4 exam which came in May June 2023. Our focus will be on programming for the web. And the question reads, open a stop motion animation.html in a browser and in a text editor. The web page must show a looping stop motion animation that starts when the start button is clicked and displays each of three images spiral 0, spiral 1, spiral 2 for 0 0.1 seconds, a tenth of a second. The animation must loop indefinitely. One second is equal to a thousand milliseconds. We are then presented with an image of how stop and stop motion animation must or stop motion animation shows in a browser. So we have an image showing there with a start button beneath. And it continues open animate.js in a text editor. Amend the stop motion animation.html page to use animate.js script, which is also being provided. Complete the animate function and the timer function to cycle through the images displaying them at the image display bookmark in the HTML file. And we have to save the animation as spiral animation underscore followed by a center number and candidate number. And then we have to edit the solution to include a button under the start button. And we add a code to so that clicking the button stops the animation. Then we save as spiral underscore stop followed by a center number and your candidate number. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to use Notepad++. So the first thing we would like to do is to open our files, the files we've been provided with as the source folder, in the source folder. So we go to file, open, then I have my stop motion animation file and my animate.js file. We don't need to open the image files. So here I have my stop motion animation, which is the HTML. And then I have my JavaScript file, which is .js. Now, the first thing we were asked to do is to amend stop motion animation to use the JavaScript file. In other words, we want to create a connectivity between the JavaScript file and the HTML file. So we can simply do that by going to just before the body closes in the HTML. You can also place it in the head, in the head tag up here. So let's place it just before the body closes here. So to do that, I'm going to open a script tag. And close it. And within the script tag, within the first one, we are going to place our animate.js file there. So src for source equal sign. Bring my so it's going to be animate.js. Like this. So this is the syntax for it. 
So now what we've done is we've created a connectivity between the two files. You can simply hit Control and S to save. And then now we move on to our animate tab or the animate.js tab. And we make amendments to this as well. The first thing we like to do is to make amendments to the time. We need to set the time interval to a hundred instead of a thousand. because we are dealing with 0.1 of a second. So we reduce that to 100. Now, if we come into the animate function, just beneath the curly bracket, we can start by declaring a variable. So we have var, and I'm going to call the variable count. You can give it any name though and assign a value of three to it. Why three? Because we have three images we are going to deal with and then I'm going to terminate it using a semicolon. Next, we have a set interval timer, which we've already reduced to a hundred. Then we come to the function timer within which after the curly brackets I'm going to type count our variable count is equal to count minus one then I'm going to terminate that as well now count is equal to count minus one is a common operation that is used to decrease the value of the count variable now there are various methods of getting this done you can either use a switch or the if statement in this tutorial i'm going to use the switch statement so just after my count i'm going to begin with switch And in the bracket, I bring my variable count. And let me add a comment to this. Now open a curly bracket and close a curly bracket. And then within the curly brackets, I begin with my case. It is part of the syntax for writing a switch statement. So I'm going to begin with case two, leave a space, case two, colon, and now which we write document, our JavaScript statement, document, or our JavaScript method dot get element by ID open and close bracket dot src equal to inverted commas then the name of the first or the name of the image for case two dot png then we terminate with a semicolon after which we bring break
Now the method we are using is document.get element by ID. By ID. So we need to go back to our HTML document. And look at the ID of the image. So when you look at line 25, we realize that the ID given there is image display. So we are going to copy image display. Go to animate our animate file and within the method, the bracket within the method here, we paste image display. So to go to the next case, all we need to do is copy and paste. Go to the next line, paste, and we reduce the case from two to one. And the image name also reduces from spiral two to spiral one. Go to the next line. We paste again. Our case reduces from one to zero. And the image name reduces from spiral one to spiral zero but this time around we don't break what we do is we call on the animate function again to type in animate and then bring the brackets and we go further down to make ensure that all other curly brackets are closed so this needs to be closed bring a curly bracket for that and the curly bracket that initiates animate function at the very top we close that as well close this space and then we save We can now open our browser, open the file in the browser and try out what I just did. So when I click on the start button, we have the images rotating in a loop. So what enabled the loop is when we go back to our text editor, you realize that after calling on all the cases, we re-added animate, the animate function here. So what it does it, when it gets to case zero and calls the last image, it goes back to the top here and begins the whole thing all over again. So this is what keeps it in a loop. This statement here is what keeps it in a loop and it will keep rotating and rotating and rotating. So the next thing we are going to do as required is to add a stop button, which will stop the loop and sort of restart the browser. So now that our HTML page is updated with the animate.js file, we can go to uh, stop motion animation.html page and save as required. So this time around, it's going to be a save as and make sure it's in the required folder examination folder and you're going to name it spiral
animation underscore followed by your center number and candidate number and it's supposed to be a dot html file so make sure you get the extension right then you save still on the same page we are now going to add the button that will stop the looping animation And to do that, we are going to go to just beneath the button that bears the name start. Just a line beneath it. And since we want the button to look the same as what the start button is, we can just copy the entire thing. For the start go to the next line and paste and where it says start we can change that to stop And this time around, when we click, we are not calling on animate, on the animate function. We are going to call on what is known as location.reload. So we are calling on the location.reload function to stop the animation. So as the name implies, this method reloads the browser. So in reloading the browser, it brings us back to the beginning when the image is not looping. So let's hit Control S. Go back to the browser. But first we need to go to the folder because we've created a new file. And open Spiral Animation. So we have a Start and Stop button showing now. So I hit Start. My images keep looping and I hit stop. The looping stops. So back in our text editor. Now that we've added the stop button, we need to save this as well. As required in the question, it says this one we save as spiral stop. So all I'm going to do is change what we have here and maintain the candidate and center number still dot html and then you say save so we've come to the end of another tutorial i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions and suggestions, you can leave them in the comment section. And till we meet in the next tutorial, it's bye.